Gmail is helping you eliminate email battleship. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Trying to schedule meetings via email is like playing battleship. Each party's trying to hit a calendar they can't see. I've written about this topic before, and that's one reason that I use Calendly. Well, if you use Gmail, there's now a Calendly-like feature built right in. Let's say you're trying to schedule a time for you and a friend to get together, but you can't reach your friend by phone. So instead, you send an email. You suggest a couple of times that you're free, and your friend responds that those times aren't good and suggests a couple of times of their own. Well, those aren't good for you. So back and forth it goes. You're both trying to hit an open slot on a calendar you can't see. It's classic email battleship. Well, here's what Gmail allows me to do. At the bottom of my email, I click on the three dots and select offer times you're free. This is new in Gmail. A panel appears where you start clicking times that you're available and the length of time for the appointment. On the next screen, you can choose if this meeting is going to be in person, a phone call, or an online meeting. And you can input the location if it's in person. And if it's going to be an online meeting, then a Google Meet link is automatically generated for you and for your friend. After you've selected a few times, click Add to Email. The times appear in the email as clickable buttons. So when your friend selects a time, it simply asks for the name and email address of your friend. The completed appointment generates a calendar invitation for both you and your friend, and it puts the event on both of your calendars. Now, experimenting with this feature, I have found one drawback. Let's say that you offer several possible meeting times for your friend, but before your friend acts on your email, one of those times becomes taken. That's the system would still allow your friend to select that time, and now you're double booked. Calendly, on the other hand, would have thrown up a message for your friend saying that that time was no longer available and to choose another. Now, there's a second Calendly-like feature. You'll see this one in Google Calendar. Would you like to have a single link that you could give to anybody, and they would always be able to see when you're available and book appointments with you without the email and you selecting times to send to them? Okay, well, if that's something that appeals to you, in the upper left in Google Calendar, click the Create button, and you'll see appointment schedule. Here, one time, you will select the times that you're generally available. This way you can have, say, weekends blocked off, and perhaps you aren't going to let anybody schedule a time with you, say, on Wednesday. You can have that kind of thing, and you'll designate an earliest time and a latest time for each of the different days of the week, and they can be different ones on each day of the week. So then uh, you give that link to anybody of your choosing. They click on it, and they're going to see times that you're available, taking into account what you had just designated as your generally available times and what's on your calendar. So it offers up the times that are truly open on your calendar. So how does anybody know about your availability? Well, click on any of the time blocks and you're going to see the open booking page button. Click the share button and you're going to see the link. Anybody with that link is going to be able to see your availability and book appointments with you. So be careful who you give that link to. They go to that link, they select a time, it goes on your calendar, it sends you an email, it goes on their calendar, it sends them an email. Now there is something I don't like. I primarily use the monthly view on Google Calendar. And if I'm using appointment schedules, 
an entry shows up on every single day, even if nobody has scheduled an appointment. So with only four time slots visible on the Google calendar for any day on the monthly view, I don't want one of those four taken up with the placeholder for the block that I have available for appointments. Personally, I'm sticking with Calendly. And if you come over to the blog post, I have other Calendly information for you. But if you want something that's already baked into Gmail and your Google Calendar, what we've covered in this content today may just be your answer. Hey, if you liked this content, be sure to get on my email list. Come over to frankbuck.org. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video and comment and subscribe to the channel. We're very close to 2,000 subscribers. By the time that this video goes live, we may be over that 2,000 mark and you can help us in our climb to 3,000. Thanks for stopping by today. This has been Frank Buck helping you get organized and make it look easy.